He's like if Jason Voorhees and He-Man had a child. <laughs> no, no, no. A goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Kenny <laughs> Hello there, my YouTube minions. It is I, your unfriendly neighborhood Skeletor. And today, I, Skeletor, am going to do my very first top 10 list. That's right. I'm going to give my top 10 80s villains, villains that would that terrify, would terrify even, even Skeletor. Skeletor. <laughs> now, this isn't going to be your average top 10 villain list that you might see on other channels. No, because you see, I, Skeletor, am not going to concern myself with things like acting, character development, well-written, well-scripted, you know, boring things like that. You're mad, bonkers. Off your head. <laughs> no, nice, Skeletor. I have only three criteria by which I am going to select my villain. Number one, how frightening they look. When I think of a villain, I want to be terrified. I mean, it takes a lot to scare me, Skeletor. I want the villains to make you tremble in fear at the mere sight of them. The way I see it is, if you find yourself alone in a dark alley and this villain turns the corner, which one will make you pee your pants the most? Everybody my age pees their pants. It's the coolest. <laughs> I may call it the pee or pants meter. That was the grossest thing I've ever heard in my life. Number two, I'm judging it based on its motives. What does this villain want to do? Conquer the world? Destroy the world? Steal a whole bunch of money? That's what I'm talking about. Which motive terrifies you the most? If you gotta go, go with a smile. How powerful are they? That also lends credibility to their motives. I mean, because who cares how scary someone looks if they don't got the power to back it up? You stink. So, those are my three main criteria. Anyway, enough of this blathering. Let's get to this list, shall we? <laughs> Let's start with number, number 10, 10, Lord, Lord Humongous, Humongous from, from Mad, Mad Max, Max 2. 2. Now, I, Skeletor, had a choice between two hockey mask-wearing villains, Jason Voorhees or Lord Humongous. I decided I could only have one hockey mask-wearing maniac fool on my list at a time. And while it was a tough decision, I ultimately went with Lord Humongous. He meets my criteria better. Let's start with his motive, shall we? He lives in a dystopian future and is the leader of a biker gang. His goal is not unsimilar to mine, as he wishes to conquer a rebellious band of fools who control an oil refinery and take it from them. like I want to take Castle Grayskull away from the Sorceress and He-Man. You guys are going to have to do better than that. So we have that in common. We go in, we go, we go, we go. That'll teach him to put the squeeze on us. <laughs> Having probably the only oil refinery in the wastelands, he would pretty much have total control over the wastelands. You plan to take your gasoline out of the wasteland. The Humongous rules the wasteland! Give them nothing! Again, very similar to my motives. But that's not where the similarities end, as we both have melted faces. I understand you, Pete. However, unlike me, Lord Humongous decided to wear a hockey mask to hide his face. Fear is a real lie. Where I own the old natural no face look. I am gravely disappointed. <laughs> now, the power he wields. Well, now you can tell he's intelligent. He's a good strategist, but not very strong in the way of actual power. Except for the fact that he, you know, is the leader of a pretty strong gang. Again, you have made me unleash my dogs of war. <laughs> but why I really find him terrifying is not his motives, nor his power, but his luck. I mean, just look at him. He's like if Jason Voorhees and He-Man had a child. <laughs> no, no, no. He may be huge, but he's still a little baby at heart. That's enough to frighten anyone, especially me. <laughs> I doubt there are many things more terrifying than this no-face-having half-naked man running into you in a dark alleyway. No, thank you. Bring out the gimp. <laughs> I'll take that knife-wielding maniac any day. That does not work for me. 
for these reasons, I have Lord Humongous, whom, judging by his name, he and I also share something else in common. You have made me unleash my jokes of all. As my number 10. <laughs> now, on to number, number 9. nine. Goza, Goza the Gozerian the from Ghostbusters. Goza. Now, I know a lot of you are like, what? Goza the Gozerian? But she's a hot chick. It's a girl. I thought Goza was a man. <laughs> you can't be terrified of her. Nimble little minx, isn't she? I'm not terrified of her look. However, I am terrified of the other things that make her a very powerful villain. Just take a look at her power for one. She has the power to conjure up evil demons and spirits all around her. Real Wrath of God type stuff. As her mere presence increases paranormal activity. Dead rising from the grave. Terrifying the citizens of New York. Mass hysteria. Enough, I get the point. Also, Goza has the power to possess individuals. Can I talk to Dana? There is no Dana, only soul. What a lovely singing voice. And turn them into dogs. And I, Skeletor, don't like dogs. Okay, so she's a dog. But what's most horrific is that everywhere this paranormal activity occurs, you can be sure that there'll be disgusting, gross snot everywhere. Ah. And in my world, being slimed is one of the most horrific things that can happen. I've been slimed! <laughs> I mean, Horat has a whole torture device based on slime. What happened? Are you okay? He slimed me. There's a lot of other reasons, like she can ruin your groceries, linger in your fridge, she can also possess you and force you to sleep with this guy. Okay, who brought the dog? <laughs> How horrible. This looks extraordinarily bad. But the number one reason for why Gotha the Gozerian is on my list is for her ultimate motive. As Gotha the Destroyer, he's out to destroy the world. Gotha the Destructor. And what makes it even more frightening is that she's going to make you choose the form of the Destroyer. Choose the form of the Destructor. Exemplified by the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man over here. I couldn't help it. It's the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. I mean, if you hated slime, do you imagine having to clean up all this marshmallow from your clothes? We got work to do. We'll enjoy it. <laughs> and they should be thankful as well. I mean, Ray only thought of the Marshmallow Man. I mean, could you imagine if his mind strayed to, I don't know, a Beavis and Butthead cartoon? These could have been your destroyers. I'm baby. <laughs> I'm like pretty tall. That would have been far more terrifying. I'm terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought. <laughs> I, Skeletor, believe that's plenty of reason to have goes as a Gozerian number nine on my list. We're ready to believe you. On to my number eight, Sado Noospa, the powerful sorcerer and demon from the Golden Child. I told you my list would be different. Seek some serious psychiatric help. <laughs> Granted, this isn't the most popular villain. I can see that it's pointless talking to you. As this film wasn't a very popular film. Shut up! However, this film is one of Skeletor's all-time favorites. I realize it's very hard for you to take in. As I kind of like Eddie Murphy. Oh, you must have saw me on television. <laughs> <laughs> but don't let his silly name fool you. You've no idea who I am, have you? Yes, you're Sardo Noomsi. Sardo Noomsi is a very terrifying villain and deserves to be number eight. For one, he wields powerful magic like me, Skeletor. I could destroy you, just like that. And has the power to shapeshift as well. His motives are pretty horrific. His motive is to kidnap the golden child. His destiny is to save the world. And that's a good destiny. Who is in essence the power of good. And when I mean the power of good, he has the power to transform evil into good. And for me, Skeletor, I'm not a big fan of heroic beings that can turn evil into good. I must save the children. Oh, I, I don't think I feel well. Nah, no, thank you. So I sympathize with Sardo Noomska's plight. Been there, done that. I don't like to feel good. I like to feel evil. I mean, not only does he just want to kidnap this child of good, what makes him more terrifying is how he must defeat him. Because he can't just kill him. No, he must taint his goodness by forcing this golden child to eat oatmeal laced with blood. You will eat. Ah, I mean gross. I hate oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't get much more horrifying of a motive than that. How long do you think you can keep up this miserable masquerade? Well, I do agree with his motive. I chose him because he's one horrific-looking villain. When Numspa transforms into his demonic form, he's one ugly, horrifying-looking creature. I can see you busy right now. <laughs> that no one would want to meet alone in a back alley. Sado Numspa, on top of all the other things he's got going for him, has that on his list. I mean, look how horrifying he is. 
<laughs> Him and his horrifying stop motion look. Ah, cringe inducing for sure. <laughs> That's why, Sado Numspa, number eight on my list. Tell your friends that Sado Numspa sends his greetings. Lick it and smoke it. No, number, number seven. seven. Ed 209. From Robocop. From Robocop. I don't like it any more than you do. No, I can hear a lot of you out there yelling, what? Ned 209, come on, Skeletor, Clarence Buttaker. You know who I am? He needs to be on that list. I don't believe it! Granted, Clarence Buttaker is a horrifying evil villain. Can you fly, Bobby? No! Deserving to be on many lists. However, as my list is structured, he does not belong on it. If it was for character development. I got the muscle to shove enough of this factory so far up here. Or just for how much he enjoys being evil. And for the brutal way with which he murdered Alex Murphy. <laughs> Turning him into Robocop. Wait a minute! What is this shit? That alone should put him on the list, Skeletor. I say no. Maybe I'm just not making myself clear. Well, all that does make him a very vicious villain and someone worthy to be a minion for sure. But think about it, Clarence Bonica himself holds no power. I don't know. Yes, he's the leader of a gang, but he's not even the true leader. It's the head of OCP that's the leader. There's another guy! He's OCP! He's the senior president! Get go! I mean, he holds no real power himself. With a human robot cyborg cop running around, that is not very frightening. Clarence Bodiger, you are under arrest. But what is frightening is a giant, out-of-control robot who seems to be possessed for some reason. A robot that no one can control is pretty terrifying. I'm very disappointed. I'm sure it's only a glitch. I mean, he's tougher than Robocop as far as power is concerned. His voice is terrifying. You now have 15 seconds to comply. Just think about being in front of those guns in that boardroom. You have 10 seconds to comply. You have 20 seconds to comply. How fast would you liquidate your refreshments out of your pants? <laughs> but if Clarence Bonica said that, I doubt it would have the same impact. I don't know. And again, I'm going to use my who would you rather meet in a dark alleyway. Clarence Bonica or Ed 209? <laughs> I think the choice is pretty clear there. You could say someone else was controlling him, but really, let's be honest, no one was controlling N209. He was a loose cannon. What do you think you're doing? We didn't drop the gun, Mama. You're coming home with me now. You have five seconds to comply. <laughs> and that is the reason for why N209 is number seven on my list. I'd buy that for a dollar. No. no. For my number, number six, the predator. the predator. Finally, Skeletor, someone we agree with. Let's be honest, the Predator checks a lot of boxes on my list. I mean, let's look at his powers. He's got the power of invisibility or stealth. He carries a laser on his shoulder. And he brandishes Wolverine like claws as well. <laughs> Not to mention, he's also pretty strong. So yes, I would say that makes him quite powerful. But what about his motive? Nah, his motives are the only ones that I kind of find sort of wishy-washy here. I mean, he's an alien being whose really only motive is to test himself as a warrior. Sport hunting is murder, you sick son of a bitch! Hey guys, this is all totally legit. I've got my permits. And likes to collect skulls as trophies, as proof of his warrior-like prowess. And being a man with just a skull for a face, you can see how that would terrify me. What's the matter? <laughs> But Skeletor's motives aren't the most frightening, especially when you take into consideration his quote-unquote honor code, which I tend to deem is quite suspect. I mean, sure, it doesn't consider shooting an unarmed man. Come on, kill me, I'm here! Sporting, I don't know. He feels that they're no threat to him. Leave it. He didn't kill you because you weren't armed. But yet, for some reason, he finds shooting someone with a guided laser from a distance while in stealth somehow sporting. I don't get it. Hey, Predator, neither one are sporting. You want to be sporting? Fight someone hand-to-hand -hand combat there. Outgunning your opponent while invisible. While he is terrifying, not exactly very sporting of you. No sport. Oh, but you feel like a real big shot, don't you? But his motives aren't the reason for why he's number six on my list. Mostly it says, look, I mean, come on, you can't find a more terrifying looking evil villain than the Predator. Just look at him. South Park had it right. Man Bear Pig does exist. It is half man, half bear, and half pig. What the hell are you? <laughs> and it's the Predator. I'm super serial. 
<laughs> I mean, can you imagine running into the Predator alone in a dark alleyway? Nothing is more terrifying than being hunted by an invisible foe. <laughs> In that horrible guttural sound he makes with his throat, right behind you? Which was voiced by Optimus Prime. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> That's right. Whenever you hear the Predator making that sound, Think of Optimus Prime. I've been waiting for this chance. Because that's him. <laughs> and that is why Predator is number six on my list. A goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Forget to leave a like and subscribe to Genealogy.